If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your Thursday night to come and spend time with the Clean Cannabis Coalition. Woo! We're really excited that you guys decided to take the initiative and come worry about your rights as a student on and off campus. So without further ado, let's welcome James Carroll from Flex Your Rights. Um, It's always fun to come back, uh, a brief background. So I graduated from King State College in 2013 with a degree in political science and sociology. And I always like to come back and write nostalgia, so it's always fun to be here, especially since during that time I was VP of Students for Essential Drug Policy. And it's always nice, so we made some big uh, moves and I always said if I had a chance or opportunity in my line of work to come back and speak to people about their civil liberties and interactions with police and such, I would do so. So here we are. Um, so let me just give a brief, brief overview. When we were students for essential drug policy, I guess one of our most crowning moments was when we, uh, uh, I'm gonna go up on the stage. I never have been, so. One of our most crowning moments was when we uh, passed the Good Samaritan policy, which is still in the books, as you may or may not know, it's in the rule book. So what this states is, say you guys are having fun, you're getting into it, uh, doing your thing, drinking or doing drugs, and somebody goes down or there's an overdose of sorts, this is a very, becomes a very serious situation. In that instance, nobody should ever worry about authority ruining your night or somebody possibly dying because you're afraid of calling the police or emergency respond, respond uh, services. So the Good Samaritan Policy grants immunity for the individual who calls. I, I can't make excuses for you guys, I'll give a disclaimer that I'm not here to try to find legal loopholes for everybody here or to endorse you know, foolish behavior. What I am here is to show, tell you guys about your civil liberties is I think they're the cornerstone of anyone's uh, rights here in the, in the United States. Without civil liberties, you're re we're really nothing here. So everyone should be aware of these. With that said, we'll go into the fun stuff, but know about the Good Samaritan Policy, I'd say just check it out on the website really quick. And if anything happens where you feel like you're in danger, some of your friends are dangerous, do not hesitate to call uh, 911 or anything like that. Uh, so you can get help, as I say, no one should be dying over such uh, foolish worries about authority. So with that, we'll move on. Um, on campus rights, I'm not sure if uh, many of you live in dorms. How many live in dorms currently here? Okay, so in, in dorms, you sign a contract. So a lot of your rights kind of, uh, not they don't go to one. You always have constitutional rights regardless of where you are. Your Fourth Amendment right doesn't go anywhere. Your Fifth Amendment right never leaves you. These amendments are with you regardless. But in the dorms, you're a little more you have a little more you have to follow because that's what the contract you sign. So some of those things, I think is the biggest, people get confused, is cer searches of your rooms, right? So you get the rules about when can an RA come in, when can an RD come in, when can campus safety come in, when can a police officer come in. Now, if you're in there being loud and being, you know, partying and doing your thing and stuff and you're acting out, obviously you're gonna get the knock on the door from whoever it may be. This is where these kind of these rights kind of come in. I would say first and foremost, always remember, always remember, that you don't have to answer the door, okay? That's a, and that, that's a misconception. If the police are knocking on your door, you don't have to answer that door. You have to decide if you want to interact with them or not, okay? Now, if there is something going on, again, this is not condoning poor behavior, poor decisions, that may be a different situation. However, just because someone's banging on the door and screaming through and acting and threatening does not mean you have to answer that door. Let them make their threats and it will handle itself in a legal situation, okay? But initially make that decision. Now, most people, again, this all depends how far you're willing to take it. I go to the extremes when dealing with police, not everyone will, and I don't think you should go to your comfort zone to prove something. But let's say you're in that instance, you don't open the door, they continue to say, open this door now, or things like that. Make that decision, if you open that door, you're gonna start talking to them, right? And remember, police are trained, they can lie, and those police are gonna stand there and tell you this and that and try to get you in trouble. This isn't to apply all police officers are bad or anything of the sort, but remember, they're not your friends, they're not there to always help you, okay? And anything you say can and use will be used against you. So when talking to the police, keep it very short. I would recommend just don't talk to police in general unless you absolutely need them, okay? If you're in trouble or you're in a situation where you need the police, fire away. But when the police are questioning you and you know you've done nothing wrong or you don't think you've done anything wrong, don't speak to the police. So blank police report is your best defense in, the, in court. And I always tell people, excuse me, initially these things might seem daunting. It's like, what, what, what are you talking about? What is this idea? This idea is very simple, is that you have the right to remain silent. And I think it's the best defense in any of these situations is your Fifth Amendment. You do not have to answer questions. You don't have to make small talk with them. Now this is often, I, I went to college here, I know how it works. This was also a way to try to get to know you a bit so we'd make small talk and banter, right? They're your friend, they're your friend. But just remember, they would just as quickly turn around 
and they arrest you for some little trumped up charge. So just remember that we're talking to the police. Let me see what else we got working here. So in the RAs and the RDs, as you know, when you sign that contract, now they may not open the door, but remember, they can't just waltz in through the door. That's always a big thing. They can't just come in. So I always say, when you answer the door, come outside, close the door behind you, and stand and talk to them there if you've made the decision to talk to them. Do not let them see anything in plain sight and close the door behind you and stand there and talk to them face to face. They do not need to know about the other people's names or anything in the room behind you, okay? Now, that, that, that's, I, I, would, I would be careful with that because in, on, in the dorm, it's a bit different, but in your own home, they don't need, just like when you get pulled over, they don't need to know you about the rest of the passengers in the car. It's between you, your, your infraction, you're the driver, and the police officer. All the other people do not need to be ID'd in the car. That's a misconception. They will use the intimidation technique to try to get you to give the name. What they're doing there is they're looking for warrants and they're looking for other reasons to bust those other people. Those other people do not have to speak. So back to the on the door thing. If they do say we're going to come in or we're going to come, we're going to search the room, you will often find that camp safety will partner up with KPD and come to the room to, to turn up the intimidation factor. So they both come to the door. I, I don't need this. You guys can all hand me, right? It's just a tracker. Okay. Uh, so they'll thanks. Uh, so they'll so they'll often come to the door and they'll have the camp safety and the PD. That's supposed to intimidate you a little bit more. It's supposed to get you into maybe oh, okay now I have to answer because there's a police officer there. Remember, you still don't have you still don't have to come. Let them search everything. Ask for the warrant. Tell them you do not consent to the search in general. And then they start making excuses. Chance to argue or need reason. You're not. You're going to be talking foolishly. This is where the whole not talking in general comes in. The more you talk when you're in any sort of condition, they're going to use those words against you. So be very careful with your words when you're talking to them and decide how far you're willing to take this. But I think the most important disclaimer for all this is decide why they're there in the first place and then make the appropriate decision. Again, if you're being foolish, you're being loud, you're too drunk, you're doing drugs, thing, there's, there's no excuse per se for that. There's no legal defense for that type of thing. But just remember when they come, if you think they shouldn't be here, we're not doing anything wrong, that's when you start thinking about these rights. And I think you'll see that more and more. That's not to say it's going to happen every night and you should always view them as evil people. No, not whatsoever. But when the time comes, just think twice about how far you're willing to take that initial, that initial interaction. Uh, let's see. So when an RA or an RD comes in the room, so RA or RD, yeah, comes in the room and then, you know, for whatever reason, I, I haven't been here in a while, so I don't know the reasoning. But they come in, they can't go right through your drawers or search things or refrigerator or open drawers. They cannot do that, okay? They don't have that authority, much like if the police come into your room. And they come into the room, they can see things hidden in plain sight, right? So if you're foolish enough to leave your bottle on the table or beer if you're underage on the table, that now gives them the reason, the, the, uh, the authority to start searching other things because they've seen that. If you have nothing there, and they don't see anything. They can't just go rifling through drawers stuff without a search warrant. So they will do the usual game with all get a search, search warrant and the intimidation. That's fine. Wait for the search warrant and then make sure you read that search warrant. Let's see every little detail and let, make sure it details all the things. Again, if you see in these situations you feel like you're being wrong, in that moment, stay calm. That's the biggest thing. There are, there's always a look for a reaction to then hit you with some trumped up charge, right? Oh, you're getting aggressive, you're resisting. Stay calm and following the interaction, that's when you file a complaint. I'll speak about the complaint process after this. File the complaint and then take it through the legal system. I know in those moments it's frustrating. I've been there, done that. Just sit there and be, go through with this. But just wait and let it play out in its, own, in its own course. But stay calm. That's the most crucial thing. And there's no need to scream or get overly aggressive or anything of the sort. Just let it happen. I know you're right. Yep. Yeah, so if, I, if the police officer asks, can I come in? Can I just say no and shut the door? It depends, it depends on the reasoning for it. You, what you were doing prior to that interaction. So I, I would say if you hear not and you've done nothing wrong, you're sitting in your room, you don't have to answer that door. There's nothing legally saying you have to open the door for a police officer. That's crucial to remember. Remember, decide on the interaction you're going to have with a police officer. Decide if you're in a state you want to talk to them. I always say the best defense is not talking to them at all. Whenever you're in court, if they get, you know, you're on the stand or whatever, and, they, and then the judge says, well, what did he say? So if you were drunk and rambling, we can use that against you, right? But if you said nothing to that police officer whatsoever, that's pretty hard to prove you did anything wrong, whether you did or not, you know what I'm saying? So it's always crucial to think about what you're saying. So let's say I was drunk, and then I wanted to take like, that. If I didn't open and go to the police officer, would that, that would be okay? I mean, there's circumstances. We'll talk about it at the end. I'll get to us at the end, but thanks for the question. Let's, let, me, let me just keep going with this, this thing. All right, so then, we were talking about the on on uh, the on campus rights a little bit more. Let's see. 
And the, la the last part, and this will relate to the whole overarching thing, is just to film everything. This, this is our, you look around the news, you see what's going on with the political things, you see all the, the violence, and not just police violence, everything is, we're, we're filming everything, which is great. We're bringing awareness to things that weren't there. There are numerous apps where you can film the police, and you're legally entitled to film the police. Don't fall for that game as you can't film us. They're public officials, public spot. You can film them as much as you want. Don't ever back down from that. And there are apps that they confiscate your phone where you can send the uh, footage you just took to the class type service. So if your phone goes, you can still access that service elsewhere and stuff, and you are allowed to film them. I think filming is the, be is the best resource because then when you get to the court and you want to prove something, you want to file a civil suit or you want to take this up a step, you have that evidence there and you can, you can pull it out and say, look, we saw exactly what happened. Now often you'll get, don't film us, you're interfering and stuff, but you're allowed to film in your own interactions. You're not interfering, you can't interfere in your own interaction per se. But we've heard that, I've gone through it a hundred times with don't film us, so uh, that, that's, that's not accurate. So always remember to film and remember, with these apps, you're filming, they take the phone away, that footage didn't go anywhere, because sometimes it has a way of disappearing with the police, right? Oh, yeah, we took the phone for a few, few days. And with college kids, I know I wasn't this passionate about this when I was in college. It happened after when I started working in this type of field. I was this passionate about all this. But I know it's easy to be like, oh, forget it after a few days. I'm just tired. I just want to hang out with my friends and do other things. That, that's where it comes conveniently to be like, oh, you know what, I don't care about the ticket, I'll just pay it. And that's what, that's what they're always hoping for, is that you just pay the ticket, shush, and keep moving on, moving on. So let's continue with off-campus, off right? Because this is where a majority of your interactions are going to happen with the police off-campus. So if you live in a house, you're right, you mean you're right, like I said, they never go anywhere, but you have a little bit more leeway. You don't, you don't have to sign a contract with a RA or an RD. And this is where it comes in more in hand. So, we all know how this works. You go, you're having a house party. They got a call. They always get a call, right? And it's you can trace back who actually made the call because oftentimes they don't get a call. This is just an excuse to come and start whatever, and it's right or wrong. If there's underage drinking, we can't make excuses for that, right? So they come to the house. Usually they just tell the clear the house, and usually it's laid back. There are a few times, though, when people are going to start. You see the pumpkin fest. I don't think it's happening anymore. But a pumpkin fest, kids foolishly walk around with a red, red solo cop right there's beer in it. Again, just just be smart about things. You, you won't get nailed. But so say they come up to you, they see the red solo cop. There's really no excuse there. Say you're walking, you look a bit funny, you're a bit impaired, and you have a backpack. They get a special lot. So what happens if you have beer in your backpack and they say, can we search it? First of all, no reason to search your bag. They, they don't need to search your bag just because it looks suspicious or anything like that. Now remember, suspicion and all this is objective. Police, much like us, are uh, for people, so therefore we're imperfect. So they tend to make mistakes, and they tend, then they, they get a little, they, they can get uh, away with it more. So when we go to court, it's our word versus their word. Granted, there's a conflict of interest because the police are working with the judge, okay, they're on the same payroll. They're going to take the, uh, the police officer's word over yours. So I just say, don't even get to that point. So if they say, can we search your bag? You say, on what grounds? But first, First and foremost, I would come back to the beginning. Why you don't have to speak with them when they make small talk again. So if you're walking down with a bunch of buddies, okay, they're picking their targets, they know kids are maybe a little worried, it's a great way to get some tickets going and stuff like that. And they say, Oh, where are you going? They don't even know where you're going. That's none of your business. They don't they don't who cares? You know, so you don't answer that question. And you keep walking. Now again, if they have reasonable suspicion to search the back, it's a different story. Now, if you're falling over and you look quite quite ill or something something's off, you're tripping balls, that's when that's when we take things get a little different and they have reasonable decisions. So again, it's about being smart with these approaches and when the situation arrives, a situation arises where they may, where they may, uh, what's called, have a reason to search, it's all about those interactions. I always say, if you know your nail art, you've done something wrong. I'm not trying to absolve anyone if nobody does anything wrong, not, not whatsoever. So like the speeding ticket, if you were speeding, get the speeding ticket. I would still say fight it in any way, make them work for that money. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and, but, but we can't make excuses for anything. So if the interaction does come where you know you're wrong, and you know, okay, I'm going to get in trouble, that's the time to shut your mouth, okay? Don't volunteer anything for them. Don't tell them anything. Let them just say, I'm, I'm not going to answer any of your questions. It's that simple. Now, you might get hit with those threats like, oh, you're not going to answer any questions. It's only going to get more difficult for you and stuff like that. That's fine. Let, let them threaten you. Just stay quiet. You can never get in trouble for being quiet. And you can never, and it looks so much better when you have your day in court if it goes to that level. So with, with the house parties and such, so if you have a house party, the, the person's name who uh, is on uh, what's called the lease is responsible for those people in that house. So that's something to remember. So if you have a bunch of underage kids in the house and drinking, if they do come and there's a bunch of alcohol, they can potentially bust you on that. I would always say, in those situations, again, where you know things like that are happening, let it happen and then take it to court the next day. But make sure all your ducks are in a row with that. I was also thinking, 
of just for you, good for you guys to know. So you have the landlord, obviously. So landlord owns the house, right, or works for the owner of the house. So uh, landlords are allowed to enter the home, but they have to give a reasonable time frame. So we had this when we lived here. Uh, so we were college kids, so we were enjoying ourselves. But our landlord, we kept keep visiting, and they're not allowed to. They're allowed to come to the house, but it needs to be a reasonable time. It needs to be a reasonable ex uh, explanation of when they're coming. They can't say, "I'll be over in two minutes." It, it can't work that way. It needs to be like, "We'll be over within this reasonable time frame," unless there's an emergency, of course. And then also with them, uh, what's it called? Yeah, they can't. They ha they can't enter at unreasonable times. They can't waltz over at 1:30 a.m. and say, "Look, we're here to search. We're here to search." Things like that. So that's good to know as well. So I think that's good. Uh, again, I would go back to in your own house, or you can give, you're given even more leeway in your own house versus the uh, versus the dorms where do not answer the door. You don't have to answer the door when they when they get there. So make that decision. If you do decide to answer the door, simply come outside, close the door behind you, and speak to them face to face. And again, don't disclose any information about everyone in the house. That's none of their business. You just handle it between you. You're the, you're the one to answer the door. I'll speak to you about it. Uh, let's see, we talked about the searching bags. So real quick, I don't know how much value this is for you guys, but when driving, okay, so this is a good one because everyone's getting hit with tickets. You're driving, okay, maybe you were speeding, maybe you weren't, you felt it was wrong. These are just a few little tips to help you with tickets in general. So when you, when you get pulled over, okay, you come to the door, come to the window and they always ask, how you doing today? We're friends, all of a sudden. We're, this friend's gonna write your ticket. So, how you doing? Say whatever you want, I'm not telling you what to say, just, just think about it in those terms, okay? Uh, do you know do you know what you did? You you know you're doing you know why I pulled you over? No, don't admit guilt anyway, because remember we're gonna use those words against yourself. No, of course I didn't know. Why'd you pull me over? So then they pull you over and then you go through it, we go through the game, right? They go back write the ticket, or maybe they don't. Again, not all bad, but just something to keep in mind. So I always tell people when they get the ticket, whether they decide to fight it or not, I would always argue, fight the ticket, okay? What it does is people get that ticket and usually you respond the next day, I gotta get this back, plead guilty, not guilty. You have thirty days to respond. Take twenty five days and respond. At the very least, it gives you a little time to get uh, some loot in your pocket so you don't have to pay it right off the bat if you did plead guilty. And if you're taking it to court, I'm not gonna go over all the, the best defense in that, that setting, but I would take it to court, but you wanna buy as much time as you can before you get to court to challenge the officer. And when you get to court to challenge that officer, you wanna bring up things that, you know, you have to you ask, him, ask him questions if you, if you know, this is going to the extremes. But you get up there and you ask questions like, do you remember what color the car was? Do you remember, they might go from the notes, that's okay, but. You want, you're trying to prove to the judge that they, they, they don't remember this issue at all. So you've bought yourself 25 days, usually a trial, it takes two or three months to get to. Do you remember what kind of car was? Or any passengers? So you want them to start going, oh, I don't know. And again, people can lie on the stand. They do all the time, hold the police and citizens and stuff. But the goal here is you're buying yourself time. Furthermore, and uh, when the police have to actually show up at the courthouse, too often I think people just get these tickets, you know, bend over and say, you know what, I'll pay them $290 without ever knowing the avenues to challenge these tickets. So I think that's a good one. Same right to fly in your car, and that's usually where you'll get hit with it. When you're younger and driving, I know it happens to me all the time, you get pulled over, you look high or something, you know, which again, this is, a, this is all subjective. So uh, so you get there, and you, they pull you over and stuff, and then they, they, they say, you can we search the car? Well, absolutely not. Yeah, I mean, what, what is the reason for searching the car? If you pull me over speeding, let's handle that right now. You don't need to search the car. But that is, that is always a question. The beauty of asking that is many people just came on it. I would invite you guys, we've all seen the show Cops, right? And, and, and if you can watch cops with a, from objective perspective, seeing cops and how many people just bend over, like, yeah, you can search the car, you can search the car. It's, it's selectively edited. There, there are things where like, you're not searching the car. Stuff. But they, remember, this is a control thing. We don't, a lot of people don't want people knowing their rights about this kind of stuff. We want authority. Be afraid of authority. Stay in your lane. Don't ever question anything. So this is great. So when you when you start applying these type of things, I think you'll find it one free. It is always nerve-wracking interacting with the police in general. But there's no reason to be afraid of them whatsoever. There's no reason to pander to them. There's no reason to talk to them unless you absolutely need to. There's no reason to speak to police officers. This isn't labeling the people who do these jobs as a bad, bad, bad person at all. But remember what their job at the end of the day is to do. Now, to protect and serve. Well, if you look around lately, I think that's very questionable. I think, and I think as college kids, we see it more and more. I was here for four years, and I saw it left, left and right how many times they violated our rights how many times people were put in protective custody, which is a very interesting concept, uh, concept. Internal possession, another really interesting concept. There's no legal terms for it, but it's interesting that you can now, in the United States of America, you're, you're allowed to be arrested for something you did already, and it's, it, it's over, but you can still be nailed for that. So it, it, it's baffling that this is allowed, and it goes on and on. I think people start to feel entitled 
I'm sorry, empowered when they start exercising these rights. I think it's, I think it's a great way, if you, I don't know if any of your political science majors, it's a great way to go through your history. Often we hear about constitutional rights, and they're going by the wayside because nobody enacts them anymore. And why? Because they're stifled, because people tell you they try to intimidate you when you do. So a uh, police officer has one they swear, they swear an oath to uphold the Constitution. Yet I always find it funny how many of them make it so difficult for you to uphold your own constitutional rights when they took an oath to protect it. So I don't want to ramble on too long. I think it's more better suited if people have questions, specific questions for me, I'll take them. And if not, let you guys get to your Thursday night. But if anyone has any questions whatsoever about this, this or that, or wants to add a piece, please let me know. Okay. Well, guys, I know it's Thursday night and it's, uh, it's, it's a big night. Heather, if you want to say anything, I appreciate you coming out. I hope these things help you. Real quick, I have uh, Fletcher Rice. These are things that you can keep, keep in your wallet. They just aren't any of the rules. And just remember, it's not, this doesn't make you, you know, feel like this is crazy. Why are you acting like this? Why are you telling people to do these things? It's not, it, this is nothing out of the ordinary. The problem is it's become the norm to be afraid of authority, to bend over backwards, and all of that. So I want you guys to take those cards. Furthermore, if you have, give one second. And then furthermore, uh, with Fletcher Rights, we're starting uh, nationwide efforts. So if you do get in trouble with the police, if you think you were mishandled or things went wrong with the police, you want to file a complaint. Trust me, I file many complaints with the police often. It's not a fun process. And again, you're a college kid, you're busy, you don't want to go down to the police station and file a complaint. With Fletcher Rights, we're uh, in the process of unveiling open police complaints. What it is, it's, we've done research for 18,000 police departments across the country. We put together contact information. People will be able to come and apply directly through open police complaints, and we'll make sure that police complaint gets delivered, and we will get back to you with feedback about what they said. You provide the details. More information, I just want to give you a chance, but just ch check out Fletcher Wright for more of these videos. They, got, they explained it a bit better than me. I'm still getting used to this this part of it. Uh, watch videos about what to do when you're in your house, in your car, anything like that. I think you'll find it helpful, and I think you'll find it enjoyable and rewarding to know when you're in the right <coughs> and stuff like that. So, what, you had a question, man? Yeah, but despite all this, uh, how come the police think you uh, they still come into you and they still threaten you because the, the people don't know how the police will react because innocent black people have been killed by police. You, you're saying despite all these rights, why the police still act in a certain manner? Because it goes unchallenged. And be, but you're seeing you're seeing more and more now these days as more people film their actions and more people stand up for the rights. That is becoming more prevalent. I mean, it's still an issue. But at the end of the day, a lot of people don't have time to do this. I get it. A lot of people will be like, you're wasting your time. Just go on with it, take the ticket, and move on. That will we'll never change the thinking if we're thinking like that. It's when people start standing upward and saying, you know what, I disagree. Uh, what's going on? I think I'm going to stand up and film this. They kind of answer your question, awareness. Yeah, and going off of that, police are people too. Yeah. And, um, they have guns, and that's a whole other like good race separate issue. But when you think they're acting out of line, sometimes it's it's better to take your day in court and to sure. comply and understand, and like you said, not say anything. Right. And and stay safe. Yeah. Like if you're worried about like the whole like the whole like black shootings and everything like that. Sure. And safety comes in. You still you have to make it home alive. No. That, that, that's the thing is I, I, I think it's important. I'm not here to demonize police or any security or anything like that. But what I am here to is to bring awareness of that they are people, this is their living. I've talked, talked, spoken to many police chiefs about this. That's not the goal, is to make people look bad. But it is the goal because often they have the upper hand because they're, they're in an authoritative position, right? And we're under it per se if you want to look at that way. We rarely have that voice up. So this is you're seeing the change as people become more aware of this all over again. It was much like in the 60s. People started taking back and being like, you know, this is bullshit. This isn't working. The powers of be, it's not working currently. Things aren't working. So it's exciting to get out to talk to groups of people who are like, you know what, I'm so good. I think I was wrong. And I think as an individual, as an, any individual, when I said this in the beginning, uh, civil liberties are your cornerstone. So when you're at college, you're learning, you're being, being given, uh, excuse me, uh, responsibilities. One of the biggest responsibilities is the individual journey throughout your life. And in my opinion, you should be able in life to do whatever you please. That's kind of the beauty of being a human being. Nobody should tell you, you can do this, you can do that. What, who is that person? What makes that person better than you? So if you do whatever you want, within reason, okay, it doesn't infringe on the rights of others, that's a beautiful way to live. And it, I think if you do that in your own life, in your personal life, the great benefits come from it. So I think teaching people civil liberties allows them to do things like that. Yeah, I think it's great that you're organizing ways to file complaints because 
they deal with that and yeah, I mean, if, if, if you do file a complaint, I've done it numerous times, so you, you, file, you file a complaint, right? Goes to the, the, the superior. Remember, they work together. It's conflict of interest. It's very odd, police policing the police. Very, what, what a concept, right? Um, so you go, you talk to him, you explain your side. And if there was a wrong, I'm not to get it. There is a wrong, some is that, but other times, usually with college kids, it's like, oh, it's ignorant college kids, he was wrong to do this. That doesn't mean you have any less rights. So you go, you talk to them, they say, yeah, we'll review it, we'll review it. Often it's like, yeah, he was in the right, okay? There was a, there was a shooting when I was here. A uh, person was running from the police. Uh, I'm trying to remember these, five years ago, five or six years ago, he was running from the police and they shot and killed him. And it, it was baffling to me, and I'm not saying he, would, he was running, you know, he was threatening and stuff. But it was baffling to me how quick it was brushed under the rug. Now that happens, does happen in the line of work. But was back, what was baffling is police are given the power with, uh, you know, firearms and such. So it's it's baffling to me. It was so brushed under the rug. But remember, someone was killed that day. A life was taken, and it was baffling to me how it was like, oh yeah, no, no, he was a criminal. Forget about it. Well, maybe so. But imagine if the shoe was on the other foot, right? If that man would have turned on the police officer. Oh my God, the hysteria. We would have heard so so many. You know, oh they were a great person. They were a great person. But now, because it was just a citizen who was labeled a criminal, now it's a little bit more acceptable that someone was shot and killed. And that's baffling to me at times. And you're seeing it again. You saw all the protests at Occupy Wall Street when uh, people were laying in the eye and the police officer just sprays all of them on purpose, right? That's a major, major problem that that gentleman thinks he has the right to do that to other people. I don't know what, what, what your mindset is when you think you can treat other people like that simply because you have a badge. That is baffling. To me. Also, the Dallas thing with after police officers were shot, that one were protests, and then the police were trying to use this tear gas to yep. pray away the, take away the protesters. Yep. I mean, but they didn't do anything wrong. They didn't make it. They just protested. <coughs> You're allowed to protest, right? You have a right to protest. Yeah. No, that 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 is my point. So. You'll see too, when you start pushing back at authority, often they're so used to getting in their way. So, so I, I've always found enjoyable to challenge authority in general. It's great, it's your right, it's, it's empowering. Don't let anyone tell you that they, they, they can tell you what to do. So when it's great, you'll see as soon as you start resisting, not all, I, I've dealt with many who are like, okay, and they understand, they appreciate that you know your rights, but many get instantly angry, instantly aggressive with you. That's very alarming that that person in that position of power gets really stressed out when people push back against it, you know? So if you do get a chance to try it out, I hope you don't have any of these uh, interactions with them like that. But if you do, just be aware. And remember the three things, just remember, decide if you want to talk whatsoever. You don't have to talk to any of them. Remember, always ask, am I free to go? Keep asking, am I free to go? And if they tell you no, ask, why are you being held? And remember, if you think there's a wrongdoing in that situation, uh, stay calm, handle it, don't say a word. And one, at the conclusion, we'll handle it in the court system, we'll handle it you know, the, the, you know, the defense attorney, anything like that. But it remains to stay calm. They're waiting for that irrational action that now gives them you know, the call to say, oh, no, no, he acted out, he was aggressive, et cetera, et cetera. So if there's nothing else, I'll uh, let you guys paint the town dead and get to your Thursday night. I appreciate you being here. I would ask you to check out our site. Enjoy, enjoy the heck out of it. Have fun. Very positive experience. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, James. Um, before you guys all take off, I just want to reiterate the point of the night, and that's just for all of us to be respectful and responsible. We have rights. We can make them work for us. But police are people, too. We're people, obviously. So there's a place for respect, honesty, responsibility in every community, and there's a right and a wrong way to go about things. So just choose the right way to go about things, be smart, be kind to others, all that fun stuff. Like us on Facebook, we have stickers, come to our meetings, we're all the people you don't know you like yet. They're really cool. Um, have a great first Thursday and first weekend. Thanks for coming. We're outside here with James Carroll. Uh, here at Keene State College. You just finished your presentation. Yes. Thank you for coming all the way out here. Sure. You spent four years here, I presume? Four, yep. And uh, that was back uh, 2009? 2009, graduated in 2013. Yep. Okay. Now, you said you've been through the ringer with the police. Um, yes. When was the first time that you really kind of got turned on to abuse? By yeah, police. Yeah. Well, well, it's interesting to say gone through the ring issue. That person, you would think that means I'm a bad person or I'm up to no good. You know what I mean? I don't have any record whatsoever. Uh, fairly straight laced kid. So I was here studying political science, and one of the classes we studied was constitutional law, and I got really into civil liberties and such. So I started, as a college kid would, I drank and had fun, as college kids will and should. So I started doing it more and more. And then there was one instance where there was a house party, um, and they told us uh, the police came, got a call, got a call. And uh, they came and they started 
people started filing out that weren't owners of the home and they started just arresting them left and right. And I went up to my buddy and said, you know, who owned the home. I went to my buddy and said, uh, I'm not sure what, what you think you're doing, but you can't just arrest people for nothing. And they're like, what are you, a lawyer? I said, I'm not a lawyer, no. And they said, you drunk, James? I don't know how they knew my name. And I said, yeah, I am. I'm not going to lie. And they said, put your hands behind your back. I was placed in protective custody. <laughs> it was Officer <laughs> Kopcha. You guys are yeah. you're familiar Pepper. with friendly. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. have you on camera doing what you're doing. Car. I don't want to get in the car. Dude, for for using an electrical device. Oh, great. Oh, thank you for serving a Get out of the road. Yes, we really appreciate it. Get out of the road. Hey! Oh, my God. Unbelievable. We got in the back of the car. Okay, I was drunk. And it hit me as I was driving there. You sober quite quick. As I'm driving there, it hit me like, wait, this is really screwed up that you can go to jail for now saying things. And my night's ruined, and I'm being escorted away from all my friends. God knows where I'm going, right? If, and I thought, this is bizarre. Once I was in that jail cell, I was in there for maybe an hour. I wasn't absolutely wasted by any means. I pushed the button and said, how much longer is this going out on for? Uh, how much longer am I going to be here? You just can't hold me here indefinitely. And they said, one of your buddies is coming to get you. We'll let you out. And I went home. Uh, the next morning, I was like, this is weird what happened to me last night. That's when it started. So I started that. Then I saw some of the cop block gentlemen, and I was... I, I talked Kieran Keane? Yes. Keen. I, I, I was... I talked to them. I've always done my own thing, you know, uh, with different things. I get into things on my own and then meet people throughout that thing. So I met with them and I, I really liked what they were doing because nobody else was doing it. Everyone was just always complaining about these issues. That's why I try to come out and speak to kids. Everyone complains about it but never does anything about it. They want to talk, right? They want to bitch when they get the ticket or go to jail. Then what are you doing after it happened? to change it. Nothing. And then they go back to the norm. It was so, I started doing that. Then I was able to do an interview um, with Allie, I think her name was, on the TV. And the, okay. Yep. Free King TV, yeah. Shower TV. Yeah, we, we were able to do something like that. So we were able to talk about, we were able to talk about that. It was when uh, Jesus, the gentleman, got shot. Mm -hmm. And that, again, I started, I, I decided, and I've always thought this way, the best way to solve problems, the best way to go about things like this that piss you off, is go straight to the top. Make a call to the chief. And I went and met with Kenneth Miola when mm. I don't know if he's still... He retired about a year ago, I think. Okay. So I went and met with him, and I was given the runaround much like tonight, where they degrade you and they think they're better than you, and you know, you know. And uh, I said, I, I just can't believe what happened to me. And we started talking about it a bit, and I was given the runaround. I'm not dumb, I know, when people are, you know, being degrading and such. So we went through that, and then... The next issue that came up was we went to, when the Bearcat was coming into town. Now at this point I had seen Ron Paul talk and I was like, this guy's cool and I, I love libertarianism. This is mm -hmm. great. What a cool way to live. And I kind of got really into it. And then the Bearcat issue came up and I thought, oh my God, they're already out of control of the police here. Imagine if they get a tank that they don't need. There's never been a need for 50 years for anything like this. And now all of a sudden we're working this in the budget. So that came. And then I went to the hearings, you know, right. when you guys and I stood and up you spoke. Talk. I was nervous. I mean, yeah. it's early on. You learn to speak better, but I still oh, speak yeah. too damn fast sometimes. But I was nervous. But it was the point of being there. And so many people were there against it. Wasn't oh, that amazing? It was amazing how many were against it. But who were the ones for it? The typical authoritative flex, please. Right. Making, again, if we degrade a person's character, right? If we don't agree with the message, we degrade their character, right? So that's how you attack them. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're nuts. So I was amazed that all those people were against it. Boom, we still got it made another appointment with Chief Miola to talk about getting the Bearcat. He went and talked about it, he insured me, oh no, we won't buy any attachments. Now, I don't know if that ever happened, but the general question is, why are you buying it in the first place? What is this purpose? And we know it's government dollars, it's surplus equipment. Why are you militarizing this police force? And they went ahead and did it anyway. So that's a brief oh, primer yeah. on how I got started. And then, I, <laughs> then it was senior year of college, and I was like, I'm gonna have fun, man. Like, I didn't want to get too, my head too screwed up, like, okay. into it, I wanted to have fun. I mean, person too, you know, so. Right on. Yeah. So now you're doing flex your rights. You're out in uh, Portsmouth. Yep. How many of these presentations have you given? So, so it's in. I just started with flex your rights. Mm -hmm. um, I started. So I started uh, with law enforcement against prohibition. And I oh, started, great. I, I, I'm not. I was an ex law enforcement, right. so I'm not one of their speakers. So with law enforcement against prohibition, I got it as an internship through Vic Van Wickler here. Right. Who the was jail the, warden? Yes, who was one of the ones who would always talk to me though and sit about and talk about libertarianism and like these ideas. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, so we'd always talk, but he's like, "You're a sharp kid. You should see if you can do something with this." And I knew I wanted to do political aspirations already, and so they got me an internship with Leap. And I started calling senators. And I moved down to Florida, and I started calling senators in all different places, trying to get meetings with the Leap guys to mm -hmm. sit with because. It's odd because authority, they're so beholden to other authority. The thin blue line is so real. So when another police officer says something, they're more prone to listen. Yet they don't listen to the citizens they've taken an oath to protect. You know, but if it's another police officer who looks like them and has their right. act, 
So anyway, so I did the leap thing for a year and a half. I was asked, and then I was asked to help on Ballot Measure 2 in Alaska. So okay. I arranged for three of their speakers to go over there. I did all the planning for my room. And I was really excited because I like the logistical aspect of those things. So we did that. I did that for about a year and a half as, aside from working, you know, traditional job. And then, and then after that, I was like, all right, something new. So I found about flesh rights. I found about flesh rights when I was a kid, and I'm not a kid, freshman, and I saw the videos on YouTube. I'm like, these right. guys are cool. Busted. Busted. Yeah, you yeah, had to get yeah. away. Yeah. Top yeah. 10 tips. So I started doing I was like, this is cool, man. More people need to see this. Right. And I get all my buddies around. We'd, we'd be doing, you know, having fun. They'd watch, and everyone's into it. Once people see that stuff, they're into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they were like, into it. I was like, who made these? And I took me two years to find Steve Silverman. I never could find out who was the guy who made it. And is that like, the producer of it? He's just like, he's the director of, of flesh rights in general. Rights, okay. And I was like, I got to get in touch with that guy because getting conversation is everything. So I called him up and explained to him, and he was like, "Yeah, we're working on this open police complaints thing. We want to keep it under wraps." Right now, this was about a year ago, and I said, "All right." He goes, "But we'll give you a call because you're one of the few people that's actually reaching out and trying, you know." And I said, "Cool, man." So they called back six months ago, and he said, "You know, for now, we want you to organize volunteers to help us fill this database of 18,000 police departments across the U.S. So people can oh. complain in one central place. We disperse them, and we can get reactions because too many people are intimidated by the police yeah. to go to the." So we did that, and then I is that has that launched? It's no, it's on. It's in all going stages still. Okay. Yep. So we're still waiting. It's kind of under wraps. So we're trying to put together a good volunteer team for it to fill because eight thousand police department. It's not fun. That's the research lot. part is never fun, oh, yeah. right? It's not sexy. So we're doing that now. We're trying to put get seven or eight rapid response volunteer people. What that means is when say you're in a little drinky dink town, something happens. We don't have that town in our database yet. We need a person who can jump in there, get it in there, so you can file a right. complaint tonight. You know. So we're doing that, and then. Um, yeah, so now the Fletcher rights, I do that. And then so you I, don't have to do a crappy job anymore. You're actually just doing Fletcher rights now? I'm do, I'm do, well, I'm doing Fletcher rights, and I'm director of development at Live for Die Alliance, which is a nonpartisan okay. uh, political group in Hampton, which is really interesting because uh, that's kind of my background, fundraising. But you're doing what field. you want. You're not working at a convenience store or anything like no, that. No, no. I get to do fun stuff. Sometimes. Cool. Yeah, it's work. Cool. But, yeah, yeah, of you course. Know, but, it, but this, it's rewarding, though. Yeah, the, the, but this is my favorite part is coming out to yeah. me and talk with them. I really get a kick out of it. I think it's so interesting. Things can't be done through email and phones. You need face-to-face -face interactions. It's so crucial. And these days, people are so afraid to do it. Like, it's a fear, you know, because we're so used to everything through a screen. I feel like today's turnout was better than I expected. I, I would personally. agree with you. Considering yeah. the night, like, and I always, with the kids, I always, I relate to them, say, tripping balls. You, you try to be funny because sure. you want to make them comfortable. You don't want to come off as some creepy older, you know? So I, I do that to show, guys, I was here and I done it, did this. That's why I, I'm, you should listen to me, per se, versus if I just got up there and was like, so, you know, like, traditional lawyer would yeah, present sure. it. I don't do that. But I was really pumped too that the cops were there. I love that I didn't we didn't ask them. So I've <laughs> asked numerous times to debate a KPD officer, like a formal debate back yeah. and forth, back and forth. Never. No dice. We don't need to do you I think you guys might have come with me one time I went to the thing. This was a long time ago. And I was like, I'm VP of Sims for Nestle Drive Policy, we'd like to debate you on rights. Mm. And the kids right now, we don't have to do that, James. We don't have to like, You don't have to, right. I don't have to do any of this. You should. Right, your civil servant. They won't do it. So I was excited tonight when they yeah. walked in. I was like, Ted, I was like, did you remind me? She's like, no. I was like, so they made a special trip up here. You know what I mean? So this is good. This means that they're. Now, isn't one of the, you may not know this, but I think one of them may be the liaison for uh, King it's, State. One yeah, of those is, two. It, is it the. I think it's the, Bomberg. Is it the girl? The or, guy. Okay, is it, yeah. Guy. We had a, there was another liaison when I was here actually, who right. did, and I met with him a number of times to talk to him about things, and he, he was a nice enough guy. But was it was interesting? I don't remember his name, but it was interesting enough what he what he did. Um, I'll never forget it because I, I document these stories so I can use them as to tell people these things do happen. He so I was dating a girl at the time who lived off campus, and they would have parties, which you're allowed to do, and you're allowed mm -hmm. to have fun. And they got called once, you know, call on them once. They came and busted them, gave their $250 tickets or whatever, you know, shook them down for money. They said, if it happens again, you're going to jail. How can you, how can you just draw that line, you as an individual, right? One police officer says you're going to jail. So they, and then they did it again because they're college kids and they're going to have fun. I was there that night in this officer liaison. So they arrest the four girls who live there, mm -hmm. including my girlfriend. And she's like, you can stay in my room. Like, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay. I'm sitting in her room. No joke. I'm sitting in her room just waiting, a little confused. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do like what's going on. And the officer liaison comes around in, through the house into her room. Doesn't know I'm there, right? He thinks everyone's left. Oh. Comes around her room. I was like, I think his name was John. I think. And I was like, what are you doing, man? Like, what are you doing in the house right now? You can't just come in the house, you know? That's crazy. I'm not, yeah. And I was like, what are you doing in the house right now? And he's just like, what? And I was like, you can't, it's weird. It's weird, okay? This is weird. This, this thing about police, they do weird shit. Right. And I was like, what are you doing in here right now, man? And he's just like, why are you still here? I was like, my girlfriend lives here. I have permission to be in the house. The question is, why are you in this house and why are you coming in her room? Right. We know why. We know what game was going to unfold. It was going to be, oh, she has her ball right up there. Big deal. You have no warrant to be in this house. Yeah. So I was like, you need to leave. Again, I love it. I was like, you need to leave the house. And he was like, well, what do you, 
excuse me, Jay? You know, he's going to intimidate me, right? He's going to get physical. <laughs> and I was like, you need to get out right now. And he's just like, it was weird. It was certainly a weird situation. That's and, creepy, too. And I wasn't, yeah, and I, I was in college. I was a far more laid back, and I was up tight yards and the real, you know? And I was yeah. like, yeah. It's, and I told my girlfriend, and she was like, yeah, that's really where I was like, so, again, that's what I tell people. They can sit there and put on the smile and shake their heads oh. at us like, idiot up there, doesn't know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. They would just as easily screw you over, any of these kids over, sure when they're would. enjoying themselves and hit them with the ticket, right? What are you guys up to tonight? Yeah. The, the act. So that's why I tell them, it's like, a, it's, they're not all bad people, but it's a wolf in sheep clothing act that they do every day. They try this game, we're your buddy, we're your buddy, just talk to us, we'll help you. No. They're not your buddy. They're not, don't, yeah. you don't. And I love always, my biggest point I'll close with is to always tell the kids, like, you don't need to talk to them. They hate that because I always say, I mean, you watch, well, you could watch hundreds of these videos. Your best defense in court against any of this is a blank police report. He didn't say anything. So why is he in here, right? How do we prove that he did something wrong? And they, they, we've all been there. They always tell you, you better start talking. You better start talking. <laughs> and you, this doesn't, you, you can use this or not, but I remember another, another instance, just to keep it going. Again, not a bad kid, no record. Got in a fight uh, with my girlfriend at college. We were drunk, so people were loud. It was uh, Arcadia apartments I lived in for a year. You all of a sudden you hear, this is why I use the story, they hear banging on the door, right? You know, you don't have to answer the door, but what they do is they bang on it three or four times, three or four times, over and over mm. again to make a scene. You know, so then I answered it, and there's three of them out there because they travel in groups. That's, so again, intimidation factor. Sure. And there's They're always, the, And there's always the female, so she can maybe take away the female and talk female to female with her. And they're like, I was like, what can I help you guys with? Uh, you know, and they're like, uh, we heard some call that you got you and your girlfriend were screaming and getting it. I was like, yep, we were, and we've resolved it now. It's okay. You know, I was like, my girlfriend's right here. Okay, and I, I can get how this could look. You know what I mean? I get how spouse will be. I get it. But this wasn't what was happening. And they're like, okay. And they're like, and they were all standing outside because they had no right to come in. And they're like, can we speak to her separately and you separately? I was like, I'm not going to answer anything. And I looked at her and I was like, I'm, again, I don't tell people what to do. You know, I was like, make your decision wisely with this. Because you know how that conversation, she was like, I'm all set. We're fine. We're going to bed. Mm -hmm. Um, but but I knew where that was going. You knew what we knew what what might happen if they drag her out, right? Did he touch you? Did he push you or anything like that, right? And then they kind of cool. If you're not confident with your rights or anything like that, it becomes very easy for them to cave. I mean, especially not to stereotype, but a, a scared girl is not, is not as going to be is just wants it to be over with. So sure. we start those questions. What happened? You guys fighting? And I, it didn't happen. But my point is like that's amazing. Instead of coming and helping fix this situation, they were going to come and they would have loved to haul somebody. They want to take someone cost, away. Like, yep. Got him for domestic abuse. I would have never had a job. I would have never gotten any these positions. I would have never been here. I would have right. been labeled as something I wasn't. All because three people want to come tonight and prove something, show off to the boss. And but feel, they're serving us. Right, right. That, that, isn't that amazing? They're, and when if they ever, usually when they show up, things always escalate. It always seems that yeah. way. I love that. Like that. Well, there was a funny thing about the, um, just as an aside about yeah. escalation, I was here during the riots, the Pumpkin Fest yep. riots, and I was, you know, in the middle of, uh, of a lot of it. Sure. And later on, when we talked to the college students, what it sounded like was when things started to go bad was when they raided parties. So they came in, broke up parties, yes. put a bunch of angry, drunk college students on the streets. That is what kind of... Right whipped up into this frenzy, frenzy as right. the police kept kind of escalating. They brought out the the pepper balls and things like that. Yeah. And you know, they, they that's what really created it was the police's actions in the first place. Had they just left the parties alone, probably never would have been any mayhem. Well it's in Butcher Rise of the Warrior Cock when he was saying when you come dressed for war, that's what you're gonna get. When they come in the right here, these are these are all people, most of them type A personalities, ready to rumble the cops, right, ready to show off. And I remember personal accounts, I wasn't here for that last pumpkin fest when it got out of control. Mm -hmm. A few buddies texted me and said there were kids trying to leave, you know, or get over a fence, and the police were just spraying them with pepper balls, left, right. My friends have no reason to lie to us. See, this is what it becomes. Right. This becomes your conspiracy theory, sure or not. Like, you just, it's like, well, I don't have time to waste doing this every day. It's just, you can tell it's passion. So it's like, why would we lie about it? What, we don't want it this way. And it's like, you know, we, we saw it with uh, Pumpkin Fest their own self. They used to, they used to come to our house. We played in a band in college, and they'd always come and, like, open the screen door at the house and say, what are you guys doing in there? It's like, close the door. Close the door, man. Like, you know what I mean? And stuff. And it's like, you guys need to quiet down. Okay, no problem. And you turn around and walk away. Mm -hmm. That throws them off so much because so many people engage like, oh. Oh, yeah. Come, come on in. Yeah. And, and But but that's what they always use is that yep. intimidating factor. It's like, what's going on, guys? A sure. friendly buddy. It's so funny that you think these people are your friends. And then the next minute, it's like, oh, you're going to jail. I, you know, I really appreciate you taking time sure. out. I know you're in a hurry to get back out yeah. to the seacoast. But, yeah. man, great seeing you. Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks for yeah. coming out here. Yeah, I was like talking about it. It's fun. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com.
I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.